When making solutions for an experiment, it is typically necessary to ensure that the solution is homogeneous, or in other words, that the target solutes are evenly distributed throughout the entire solution before you assay. A common misconception is that solutes rapidly mix the instant it is added to the solution. Suppose you measured a solution in a spectrophotometer that was not properly mixed. Will the result be an underestimate or an overestimate of the actual solution concentration? Possibly both, as this can be a random error. However, if the aliquot solution is more dense than the solvent, the concentration may be higher as the spectrophotometer's path of light reads at the bottom of the cuvette. Here this dye solution is more dense than water. After four minutes, the solution still has not been evenly mixed. The reason is that the dye molecules require energy to break the bonds of the existing water molecules surrounding the dye in order for the dye to move to other parts of the solution. There are four ways to mix the solution. The default method is vortexing. To vortex, touch the tube on the vortexer and allow a vortex to be created throughout the entire solution. Be sure your fingers are not placed too close to the solution, as they will dampen the force needed to agitate the solution completely. Also be sure not to over-vortex the solution, as too much mixing may cause the solutes to degrade. Once you have created a full vortex throughout the solution, you can stop. When you have solutions that have a volume that is more than half the capacity of the tube, you cannot easily use a vortexer, and such use may result in a spill. In this case, you will have to mix by inversion. For this sample, you would have to seal the top of the tube using parafilm. When using parafilm, you only need a piece that is about the size of the opening of the tube, as the waxy film is stretchable. Watch how the parafilm piece is held at the edge between the thumb and the index finger. The parafilm is then stretched and placed over the top of the tube, whereby the wax is compressed on the sides of the tube in order to create a tight seal. Once you've created the tight seal, you may invert the solution a few times. Do not use too much parafilm as it is wasteful and costly, and it doesn't look too pretty. Remember that you will lose points if you are wasting supplies and reagents. In some instances, you may want to mix by pipetting. To mix by pipetting, the volume of the solution should never exceed about 80% of the total capacity of the pipetter. You will damage the pipetter if the solution enters the shaft of the pipette. Also be sure that your pipette is set to only 70 to 80% of its maximum volume. Once set, and take up and dispense the solution a few times. This procedure has about the same amount of input of energy as to vortex, which could also result in a breakdown of the solute's chemical structure. An added disadvantage of this procedure is that you may also lose some of the solution in the process. Last common method is mixing by tapping the solution. This usually works for microliter volume samples, and some researchers claim that it is the most gentle of the mixing techniques. However, the problem with this method is that tapping may not be sufficient, or you can lose some solution as the solution jumps up the tube. You can either centrifuge the sample or quick spin, or you can tap the solution on the bench if the entire solution is not needed for the assay. That usually works to bring the entire solution down to the bottom of the tube. So long as you perfect your mixing technique and mix all solutions for a particular experiment systematically, then any breakdown of the solute will be systematic for each sample, which can effectively be ignored. Thus, vortexing is generally the favorite method and should be used for every sample unless otherwise instructed. Since you are all assumed to be beginners in mixing solutions, be sure that you include the vortexing step in all your protocols. Happy mixing!